In this survey of engineering video, we're going to be continuing the design process, talking about the second part, which is design. So what's in this video? Continuing the engineering design process, focusing on the design piece. We're going to be talking about the steps within the design piece, brainstorming, design requirements and constraints, and how to select a solution. Here are your portfolio questions for this video. What are the steps in the second part of the engineering design process? And what occurs during each step? So as a review, here's the graphic of the engineering design process. We're going to be focusing on the design piece where we are basically making the plan for what it is we're designing. We're brainstorming different ideas setting the constraints and requirements, and finally choosing the most promising solution. Brainstorming. What do we do in brainstorming? Well, the purpose for brainstorming is generating lots of ideas. <clears throat> quantity over quality. We want as many ideas as possible. Things to consider are that wild ideas are always welcome. This is where we get creative and uh, break any barriers to innovative ideas. Hitchhiking is okay. Hitchhiking, hitchhiking means that it's okay to take an idea and change it a little bit or use that idea and add to it. That's called hitchhiking. And the most important rule during brainstorming is that there should be no criticism. Criticism stops the flow of ideas. So next we move to deciding what the requirements, specifications, and constraints are for the design. So in order to understand what that means, let's talk some definitions. Requirements are what the design must do. This is what your design is intended to be able to do and how it's going to do it. The design or the requirement includes the features that the design has, how it works, how it should perform, and what kind of quality it should have. Specifications are within the requirements, generally are how the requirements are going to be met. These include numbers that we can measure during prototyping, so quantifiable information. And constraints are what the design must not do. These are limits on our design. So design requirements and constraints can fall into a set of categories. Not all of these categories will be applicable for every design. First, performance. What is the design supposed to do? What size or weight, what kind of measurements are um, the geometry of the design? What materials um, are we going to use and how should those materials perform? What kind of energy and how much of it uh, is going to be used? Time. Now this is concerning how much time it's going to take to design, develop, and manufacture the um, design. Also, there are generally limits on costs for every design. For um, the design part, the development, the manufacture, and the, the distribution. We need to consider how the design will be made, how it will be manufactured. And are there any standards to which the design must adhere? These are generally set by a regulating body in the industry. Um, there are things that you can look up online. Sometimes they're governmental standards, safety standards, etc. Safety. How must this, what sort of requirements must be made or specifications so that the design can be operated safely or used safely? And how it, are the materials going to be brought to where the design will be made? And then how will the parts be moved? And finally, how will the final product reach um, its destination for distribution? 
and ergonomics. This means how does the product or the design interface with people. So let's take a look at an example. If I'm going to be designing a new set of uh, crutches, I might have the following requirements and constraints. Notice that not all of the categories are applicable for this uh, type of design. So in the category of performance, crutches should allow a user to walk only on one leg. That's how it should work. Um, geometry, these are the measurements, should be adjustable for a user between four feet and six feet tall. Materials, <clears throat> these materials should weigh less than two pounds and be able to support 200 pounds of weight. Notice that I'm including numbers that we can um, test against during prototyping. I'm not including any requirements on energy. Energy won't be used other than the energy um, from the person using the crutches. Time, the time that we have to design and develop is six months. So our cost requirement or constraint is that the crutches must cost less than $10 to manufacture. There are no requirements for the manufacture of the, the crutches as of yet. The standards that have to be met, these would be um, looked up on regulating sites and uh, must meet the required standards for medical equipment. Safety. These crutches must work and allow a user to walk without slipping on a variety of different surfaces. No requirements for transport and the ergonomics are that the crutches must be easy to use and comfortable to use. Next, after we've set our requirements and constraints and done our brainstorming, we have to whittle down the number of solutions. Hopefully after brainstorming you have many, many, many uh, options, but now we need to choose one in a systematic way. First, we'll start by selecting design criteria. We will draw, the, draw these from constraints. These are things like easy to use, low cost, that sort of thing. They're pulled in short phrases right from your constraints. Uh, you'll use a pairwise comparison chart to rank how important the criteria are. Is it most important to have it be easy to use, most important to have it be low cost, etc. Your rank order, those importance of those criteria. Finally, you'll use a decision ma matrix to give a number to how each different solution performs for each of your criteria. So in summary, this is the design pro the engineering design process part of the design. Basically, we're making the plan for what we're going to make and design. Um, we've talked about brainstorming, design requirements and constraints, and then how we select.